Do we as Christians ever use in-house language? Hi, I'm Ken Yates from Grace Evangelical Society, and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about that topic. Well, what do I mean by in-house language? Well, what it means is that we have a tendency as human beings that when we're around people uh, in similar circumstances, we use language that we understand that people who may not be a part of our group, that particular group, uh, have no idea what we're talking about. For example, I spent many years in the military, and the military has its own lingo. We have our own way of expressing things, and people in the military know what those phrases mean, and people outside of the military don't. For example, uh, I remember phrases such as 100 mile an hour tape, or if someone says, I'm going to pop smoke, or if someone says, oh, dark 30, or a very one that, a very common one that you may have heard of is the phrase hua. Hua. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we do the same thing in our own families. Parents with their children or brothers and sisters or children with their parents. There may be phrases, well, not maybe, there are. There are phrases that we use in a particular family that people outside of that family don't know. They don't understand the phrase. Just recently, uh, I saw a, a humorous example of that in our own family. I drive a pathetic car. It's a 15-year-old Toyota Corolla. It's got rust on the roof, a lot of rust, and on the hood. Uh, it's full of garbage. It. Uh, my wife says it smells like a wet dog. Two of the doors got dents in it, but I love that car. I love that car because it's very reliable. It's got a lot of miles on it. I've gotten my money's worth out of it. When I register it, uh, the people go, man, this thing ain't worth anything. So I get the lowest rate for the taxes on it and everything. Uh, and because of that, I wouldn't trade that car with anything. I don't worry if someone opens a door and puts a dent in it at the grocery store. And to me, it's a Mercedes. And that's what I refer to it as. And that's what our family refers to it as when they're talking to me. And the other day we had an issue with one of our cars. Our daughter said, hey, we need a cable for the battery. And I said, is it the Mercedes? Now in our family, we know it's not a Mercedes. We, we know it's that piece of junk out there in the driveway. But someone who was not in the family heard me say that. And they went to my wife later and they said, you know, I, I know Ken pretty well. I never knew he drove a Mercedes. And my wife said, what are you talking about? And then she explained, goes, oh, no, no, that, that that's just a phrase we use in our family. The reason I use those illustrations, whether it's the Army or, or uh, in our family words that we use, is we can do this as Christians. We can use phrases, and and particularly when we're talking to non-believers, we're just so used to these phrases that we use them. For example, words like propitiation, justification, redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Sometimes we get real fancy and say stuff like the hypostatic union. And when unbelievers hear those things, we don't realize that they don't know what we're talking about. Just like that person, <laughs> it never occurred to me that I had to explain what the, a Mercedes in our family meant. Uh, we use this jargon, and again, we leave an unbeliever in the dark because they're not part of the family. It's we're using an in-house language that they don't understand. Let me tell you a true story uh, to show you how this is, uh, how prevalent this is and, and what a problem it is. I remember years ago, I was in a uh, chapel service and a guy was preaching in the military and it was mainly young soldiers were in there. And the the pastor, the preacher, use the phrase John 3, 16. Now we use that phrase and we think, well, everyone knows what John 3, 16 means. A young man came up to me after the service and he said, you know, 
what is that John 3.16? He was from a big city and he goes, I was very confused because when I heard John 3.16, I thought it was talking about a train in the subway that, that arrived at 3.16 p.m. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's just like, no, that's not the in language that we use. The reason I'm talking about this is simply to say that when we are talking to unbelievers, I think we need to be careful of the language we use. You know, when I'm around non-military people, I need to be careful that I don't use phrases that only people in the military use. And I've learned that I got to be careful what words I use to describe my car or maybe some other things that we use in, in our particular family. I love the Gospel of John because it is a book that is written for unbelievers. And the language is so clear and so, uh, it is so obvious for the unbeliever to understand. It's so clear for him to understand. Jesus says, he who believes in me has eternal life. He who believes in me will live forever. He who believes in me can never lose this gift. If you believe this gift that I have to give you. See, that's something the unbeliever understands. That's something that someone who's not in the family uh, comprehends what you're saying. And so we just need to be careful sometimes and just to be aware that when we are talking to unbelievers, let's make sure we're not just using in-house language, language that only those in our circle understand. If you've liked this video, I'd ask that you would press the like button at the bottom of the page. If you really like it, I would ask that you would push the subscribe button. And remember, keep grace in focus.